back to Cooking in Conversation. I'm your host, Home Chef Nick, and today I have two beautiful guests with me today. Ladies, would you like to introduce yourselves? Absolutely. Hi, everybody. I'm Dorielle, and of course, I'm here for the Food in Conversation. Hi, I'm Jamesa, and I'm here for the food, of course, and a little bit of conversation. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. So, for today, we're going to have a good menu today. Guess what? Have you ever had Salmon Wellington? You've heard of beef wellington, but have you heard of salmon wellington? Well, guess what? We're going to do salmon wellington today. I'm also going to do a lobster mac and cheese. What? What? Lobster mac and cheese. And last but not least, we're going to do curry chicken and shrimp with rice and potatoes. Okay? <laughs> so, with that being said, let's get started. We're going to start with the, the salmon first. Okay. Did you do the steak yesterday? The carne salmon? Yes. So we're going to start off with the salmon wellington. That's going to take a little time for it. So if you're at home, you want to follow along, please get your oven to 400 degrees, OK? And if you have a can of croissants in your freezer or refrigerator, take them out. This is how we're going to cheat today. Case in point, most restaurants, unless it's a Michelin star restaurant, it's going to take a can of croissants or a can of biscuits. They're going to roll it out, sort of like what I did. Okay? And they're going to do what, I, do what I'm going to show you. So. For those at home, here is the cream cheese and the spinach, along with all the goodness, goodness in here. So we have fresh herbs and spices that I chopped up. We got some cilantro, we got some parsley, we got some sage, we have some uh, oregano. Okay, all this is fresh. So did you chop it, or did you put it like in the blender thing? Oh no no no! I use old Betsy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get started. So what we do is we're gonna take a piece of the salmon. All right. Is that skinless on both sides? Mm-hmm. See. Oh, nice. Did you cut that or anything? Um, no, I came like that actually. I'm more like, more like that. So here we go. Here's the salmon. And what we do is we take a little bit of the filling. And we're going to place over top of it. So we want to get a nice even coating on both sides. It just looks really nice out, like a regular dip. <laughs> nice you could use this for a regular dip, actually. Now, pay attention. See how you do this? I'm making this real simple. You can actually do this at home. Now, what I'm gonna do is, see, I'm trying to make sure the sides get done correctly, like this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna end up cutting part of this off. Okay. okay. Make sure not to cut yourself at home. Piece of the puzzle is going to do an egg wash. So we're going to egg wash. All right. Make sure we cook this very well. Then we'll cut slits in it. So that he can escape. You cut into the salmon too, or just the bread um, mm -mm. part? Okay. Yep. This is the part. There we go. Oops. Now, for those at home, here we go. Here's your salmon wellington. 
So we're going to make a few more of these, just like that. And we're going to put it in the oven on 400 degrees. To me, this was earlier when, when I was going for the, the, the pain of trying to roll these out. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> I was having a hard time. So now, you said because your filling has seasoning in it already, you would suggest to put nothing on the salmon at all? Only if you want to. Okay. And trust me, this has a lot of seasoning already in it. Trust you, you know. <laughs> you know, I definitely went through the um, videos a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Oh, really? You just now went, went through the videos? I mean, I was just... I mean, I already knew it was going to be good anyway. Well, let me see what this guy, guy can actually do. <laughs> can he actually cook? Can he actually do something? So I mean, you know, no, you might have had to jump back in and out. Right. So, <laughs> so just make sure I know where to get into. I got you, I got you. I, I hear you. And at the same time, it's always nice having somebody that's cooked for me, so. That's right. I appreciate it. So. See how easy that was? Putting the egg over, what does that do? Oh, the egg wash? Yes. Use that cook. When, you, uh, when it comes out, it's like golden brown. Okay. A nice golden brown. Any seasoning in that egg? No, there's no seasoning in the egg. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm about to do some better than that. I was going to suggest that. Yes. yes. <laughs> Voila. There we go. To go. So what other meats would you substitute if you have somebody that doesn't eat salmon or Um so when you're doing um if you want to make it a wellington, right? It's in different versions of wellingtons. You have beef wellington, you got salmon wellington, you have a lobster wellington. Mm. <laughs> See? Never even knew. Probably just one. No, 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 no. try the lobster, the lobster one. So, so the lobster one is basically the same way I'm doing the salmon. It's going to have that in it. Okay. Okay. Basically the, the same way. The only issue is you might add like different cheeses and stuff to it. Um, but it's basically the same. Now, the beef wellington, that is the most complex out of all the wellingtons. The most complex to do. Because it takes... Um, if you do it right, it's take about between two and three hours. Seriously. So, all right, let me explain. The the meat itself, uh, usually they get like a filet mignon or, or one of the top end pieces of meat, right? To do it. Uh, at the same time, too, when they're doing that, then they also will coat the meat in like um, some mustard. Okay. So they do that. Uh, the mushrooms, they will fry the mushrooms that are ground up. Okay. And that's a kind of a uh, topping like this. Um, you wrap it. You, so you put the, you fashion the mushrooms to be a, a, like like a topping, but it, it's encased all around the meat. Gotcha. Okay. Now the issue with frying the mushrooms is you have it ground. They're ground up mushrooms. Mm -hmm. So you didn't. One doesn't realize ground up mushrooms has a lot of water in it. There's a lot of water inside those mushrooms. And so, with that being the case, you have to cook that water off. You have to ground it, ground it up. It's actually in the skillet. You see, that's a problem. And does it if you do beef wellington, do you cook the meat to a certain point first and then right. wrap it? Mm -hmm. You do. You cook okay. it. Okay. As you see, this salmon right here is basically literally almost done. Yeah, fish is 10, 20 minutes. How is it almost done? You freak it 
Um, so I soaked it in living lime juice to kill the parasites in it. Allow me soaking it for an extended period of time. It actually cooked it in the, uh, the juice itself. The citrus actually cooked it. Gotcha. So that's why they gave me another flavor to test the lemon lime. It gave another flavor, but I made sure to actually wash it, wash it, wash it, to get that out of it. That was and that was the issue. Okay. Oh, two. Um, after you wrap the beef wellington up with uh, saran wrap, you have to put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or more. There we go. Just notice I'm doing stretching the, the dough so it stretches over. So, so this is called cooking a conversation. Let's jump into our, our conversation for today. Um, Darrell, you was mentioning something about Monopoly <laughs> before the show. Can you enlighten us about the, one of the versions of Monopoly that's out there currently right now? Okay, so I have to say too. So, my daughters and I were looking for just different games, different stuff us to do that did not involve the TV, phones, nothing like that. Right. So, we came across wanting to buy the actual Monopoly game. We had it for a while, but you know, kids, pieces get yeah. lost, and, <laughs> you know. So we just wanted to find something else. So I was like, looking around for it, and like I said, we went to Target and Walmart, and while I was looking online, I came across something called Ghetto Monopoly. And I was like, okay, this has to be something that really no one knows about. And I was actually, when I first heard about it, I automatically went, to something negative. Really? Just because of how it sounds and I was like, okay, so I bet you it's all types of stereotypes that's in this thing and it's just not gonna be good. So of course we YouTube it and looked it up and there it is. Was it that expensive? It was yeah. hundred dollars? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. Let me see if I can find it. <laughs> YouTube. Oh, I don't know how you buy it for hundred dollars. But you know what, um, when the people, when the, you know, of course you go straight to the reviews. So reading the reviews, people were using it as a game, but most people were using it, keeping it as a collector's kind of item. Really? It was like, I, like I said, I couldn't believe that they actually had something like that. Uh -huh. So it was more, like, let me see what it is. Like, no, I don't want to touch it yet. Just, just look at it first. Here it is. Okay, and that's why, because it even has on here reviews that it was a banned, offensive game. What? Uh, so that's banned? why it cost so much. Probably. Banned like, offensive? It was. I mean, I can see how it could be offensive. It was what's called ghetto operate. <laughs> 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 so when you think of ghetto, you ought to. That if you think of something like negative, exactly. So, yeah, that's exactly where I went. And then, like, who would name a game Ghetto Opoly? Or, or say you've seen the game that said Black Opoly or something like that. Like, I know, I think I've seen one of those things before. Really? Something similar to that, actually. Well, I forgot where. Sorry, yeah, exactly. So, was it teaching you like Life Lessons, like Monopoly? You know what? It. Oh, yeah, I don't know, because they stuff. They stuff. I mean... Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That That is kind of offensive. I've seen that. And, like, the normal person, <laughs> you go into the store, and you be like... Or, you know, you go into the store, you see them ugly black doll babies. Exactly. That's how exactly. I would have felt if I seen this board in the store. So, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen in Foodie Lane, let me just explain to you the picture out of the door of the door Oh, wow, that's, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it had a gangster on, on the, the, on the uh, front. Yeah. So, it can be offensive to some people. Yeah, that I can see. I can see that. That's that's pretty bad. Yeah. 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 That is the actual box of the game, which I just showed you. That wow. Hold up so hard. There's like 40s everywhere, guns, of course, 
forties anyway? Yeah, I guess that's the ghetto. But you know what? It's like so that's why I kind of felt bad about it because when you think about ghetto awfully, the first thing that came to my mind was the thing that they talk about us people. They are. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Well, and I see what's my view. You got the gangsters, you got the strip pole. Strip. So you're not buying property. Can you tell me what you're buying with this ghetto? It look like you're buying strippers, <laughs> beer, $200 for a beer. Yes. Wow. Oh, yes. Oh, no, no. Yes. What is this? Ass cheeks. Sorry. <laughs> they set up the go to jail corner. They got the disordering. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. They might have crossed the line with that one. Um, but, we're going to say yes, probably on that one. Yeah, at first I was with you, but now <laughs> I'm just saying, like, where would you. It is just crazy that. I wouldn't even have something like this. So that market would not be for me, for sure. That market might be somebody that's in the ghetto, and but I don't see any like fun in that. Because I thought it was still, you know how on the map you still learning about. Yeah. It's, it's actually teaching you something. I like yeah. the credit card version when I was. Yeah. I like that one. I have a friend. Um, she had a she bought that version over there, and it was it was really fun. We had a game night. Like, what are the pieces? Is that a fight? By the way, I love your game nights, by the way. Oh, I don't know. Jamise has wonderful game nights. Okay, so you see the weed right there. I see the weed. And what? Weed? These are the pieces. Sun, the pieces. I see a gun. Yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't play that. Oh, absolutely not. That's why I was like, let's look at the reviews first. I've seen how much it was. Let's look at the reviews and see what people are talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said a lot of people that were buying it were really not playing it. They were just using it as a collectible. Exactly. Okay. Something that, hey, you're not going to believe what I just bought off Amazon. Or what I just bought off of whatever. Like, I am intrigued kind of now. So if I had a game night, I'm like, hey, y'all, let's play Ghetto, uh, ghetto Aqua. And then they would see that and be like, wow. Where did you get that from and why did you buy it? Yeah. <laughs> For the simple fact, I want to see your faces. <laughs> exactly. Right. That would be the only reason why I would buy something like that. <laughs> so I'm almost tempted for that $100 to do me off when I see the price. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, <heaven. laughs> Okay. So I found a game that was a little bit better. Than I mean, how could you do that? Um, <laughs> Anything, hey, right? You got, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. All right, so look, yeah. Let me see. So I saw this on somebody's um, news feed on Facebook. And I was like, oh, where did you get that from? So it's charades, but it's a black version. It's called It's a Black Thing. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then I went on the website and they had different versions. They had like an 80s version. So all the things that you be acting out like from the 80s, they had a 90s thing. They had a whole bunch of different ones. So I want to go and find. I want to put that in your next game night. It's on back order. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to have a game night already. I'm already planning it for November. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to find it. Hopefully I can get it in before my next game night. Because I do want to I do want to play that. Um, this, it's a black It's a um, It's a black thing. It was pretty cool. It wasn't as degrading as that. Degrading, yeah, yeah, over the top. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. All right, we're gonna have six summer Wellingtons. However, the first four that are actually in there mm-hmm. are, are gonna be the best ones. This is aesthetically; these don't look aesthetically pleasing. It's all about the taste. Exactly. I don't know. Well, we had some issues. Early on, so we're gonna blame it on that and you can go with it. True. Okay, so switching gears, we all know Dave Chappelle had a, had a special come out on Netflix. So I don't see anything offensive with it with this show because Dave has that first amendment right, first amendment right to get that straight, and lastly. If you watch Eddie Murphy coming up or any of the great comics, you know, they were a lot more offensive. Oh, yeah. And it was no host bar. You know, 
What do you think, America? What do you think? I mean, like I said, I saw it. I I did think it was funny. I was kind of shocked at some of the things that he said, but that's stage show. And you know, like you said earlier, he's a comedian. That's his job. He's a comedian. That's his job. Mm -hmm. So I personally haven't watched it. Only can go based off of what I heard. And I, based off what I heard and the things that go on, I don't feel like he did anything wrong. All he doing was speaking the truth. So I can't get mad at the truth. Sorry. Yeah. I think you get mad at the truth. Yeah, it is. You know, it's the truth. It's true, but I can. We're making the lobster mac and cheese now. Do you think now, like, this day and age, people are, they tend to just take things? Way over top? Yeah. Yes. Because, you know, you've seen all the memes, right, where people have said, um, in my day, you know, you couldn't live in my day because you were too soft. Absolutely. You know, and I believe that that is basically the truth. You know, um, society's got to like, very soft. You know, Me Too. I understand the whole purpose behind the Me Too movement. Also, I understand everything else behind it. Sometimes you need to have a movement, but a, a comedian is a comedian. Right. His job is to make you laugh. And pick on people at the same time. Yeah. That's all he it's all I like entertain. So so is the gay community off limits? You would think so, right? You would think so. Especially I mean, <laughs> have you ever seen DL Newton in in on on stage? He goes through the entire crowd. Yeah. From the first row back. I'm talking about he does not let up at all. I saw the I saw uh Dale Newton at Constitution Hall. And he has a part of his show, and I, I think I don't think it's scripted, but I think part of his show, he just starts joining on people in the crowd. Somebody in the crowd doing heavy for his show started, you know, said something, trying to join on him. Next thing I know, he stopped his entire show. All of a sudden, he just started, he started, he went on that person, one person. and then he started going in on everybody else in the crowd. I was like, see, that's why I'm over here, and I'm not over there because I'm gonna get picked on. No, mm -mm, no, no. I do the same when I go to, whenever I do make it out to a company show, I try not to be like in the front or with them their vision, eyesight. I try not to go to the bathroom, I'll wait till they like switching out. Cause I love it, I don't need to say nothing to me. You know? Cause comedians look well, they, a lot of the great ones will go ahead and get you. Yeah. Remember the King of Kings of Comedy? Yes. With, um, when um, Steve Harvey was joking the old dude about his jacket yes. and he took his jacket. Yes. But he, but behind the scenes they were saying let me go get his let me get that man his jacket back when he shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> oh right right right. He dropped it and he was like oh something hard in there must be some hardware. So, yeah yeah they definitely will get you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because you see what I'm doing now? I'm trying to make sure that I get an even coating, an even mixture of the cheese and the macaroni, you know? And I just want a you know, nice even mix. You know, some people don't, don't take care and do a nice mac and cheese the, the correct way. Because this requires love and attention. See? Now, when everything is going to start to melt together in the oven, right? It's going to be nice, gooey, gooey, cheesy. And then I'm going to throw that lobster biscuit in there along with the lobster. Okay. And that's when it becomes lobster mac and cheese. So the noodles, did you put any type of seasoning in the water or just boiled in plain water? Girl, you know I put some seasoning in it. Oh, I'm just was curious. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't here for that process. So I'm just wondering. No, no, because what I did was, in order to keep the show going, I um, did a lot of, of pre-prep ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So like, I boiled noodles ahead of time. You know, I tried to make sure that I had the dough ready for the salmon wellington, you know, ahead of time and whatnot. So this is our all-in-one seasoning. I put this and some uh, Mediterranean sea salt in the water. Okay. All in one seasoning. Okay. Now, I use this. This has like maybe, you look on the back, put a, put a sodium, look at that. About what, 90 milligrams of sodium? Mm -hmm. Look how big this damn thing is. Right. I like this. It's complete seasoning. Okay. Can you make mac and cheese? I've never made mac and cheese from scratch before. Girl, I want to try it, but I'm just I'm just kind of scared. Well, you see how I'm doing? I'm this, watching you. This, oh, this that sounds like that sounds like some questions. <laughs> it's like the boiling of the noodles. That's easy. Because you think you go over or the under. Right. The that issue. was that was the thing too. I was like, exactly. do you leave the noodles a little tough because you still gotta bake it? You don't want to boil it too much and it is like mushy. I gotta show you this. Okay. It's looking really good right now. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. We're almost there. Okay. Okay. For those at home, here you go. A little bit, a little bit longer to cook. Okay. Okay. I was curious to know how the, the salmon would cook um, on the inside with that bread on there and, with, and bread burning. We're going to put a few more minutes on it. Move this out the way. This is our rice, by the way. Put for the curry later. So, see this? We're gonna put this to the side because this is about ready. I'm gonna use the top oven since the top oven is already uh, ready to go. So put this to the side. And it already has the cheese in it already. I'm gonna put some more cheese on top of it. The whole goal is to be just mac and cheese, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. cheese. So you just use one type of cheese? Um, depends on who my audience is. Okay. Because sometimes I will use up to five different cheeses. In there. But you gotta be careful because if you, if you recall, cheese like these cheeses have a lot of salt in it, and you're like, why is it salty? I didn't put any salt in it. This has own, has its own salt, so you gotta be careful about you know putting enough or putting too much. And uh, one salt content for one may have may be higher than another. Yeah. See what I mean? So know what you're doing ahead of time because you don't want to be in front of a crowd and you say, hey, how you doing? And they're like, this is all too salty. Gotcha. You know, people have done that. Nobody really thinks to check for that though. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I had to cater one time and I messed up. I put two different, too many different cheeses in there, and I had like several different pans ready to go, and I had put one pan in there, all the different cheeses. Yeah, I made a mistake. I learned the hard way. It, was like, it wasn't good. I threw, threw the whole pan away. There ain't much to learn about doing, right? That's true. Yeah. I didn't even realize cheese had the first time. Salt. That's yes, it has a lot, a lot of kinds, a lot, a lot of salt okay. content. All right, so that's two dishes down. One more to go, right? One more to go. All right, so this out the way. I'm gonna start bringing stuff out. So you can see what I'm doing. 
some jalapeno peppers, and a scotch bonnet pepper. Now, the secret is I did not, did not, see that? It is not perforated in any shape or fashion. It's only one whole. And we have our potatoes right here. That's some red potatoes that I cut up. Okay. Keep them in the water, keep it nice and moist. We have our red onions, we have our diced tomatoes. Actually, that's red. Let's get the first batch of the summer logs now. This is this is done. those at home, here's your Simon Wellington, right here. Just like this, we do have a plate. And watch yourself over there, we don't want no pads. Sometimes hard. Yeah, it is. Sometimes it's very hard in the DMV. I am currently dating. Hey, congratulations. Okay. You're one step. You're one step away from getting engaged and married. You got me beat. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, dating for me was very interesting. Um, I moved up to the DMV maybe like five years ago. Five years? Five years. I've been here five years now. Um, and that looks good. The curry chicken. Curry chicken at home. And also, guess what else I have? This is your curry shrimp. And here are all the rest of your fresh herbs and spices right here that I chopped up. This is the rest of it. The other half went inside the, uh, the filling that I use for Simon Wellington. So without any further ado, let me get this started and please continue. Okay. So yeah, um, so when I first moved here, I wasn't interested in in, in an exclusive relationship with anyone. I just kind of went to date around, see what's out here, and kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I dated quite a few men, all very, Different. Shapes and sizes. I don't like big men too much, so I'm going to say all shapes and sizes. I like my men tall and skinny, but my favorite boyfriend I have now is the complete opposite of what I like. He's not tall at all, but he's mine. And it kind of worked out sometimes, you know. I'm not saying supposed to mind. 
When I say tall. Oh, you're talking about six foot? Yes. Okay, I'm yes. average. I'm yeah. When I say tall, I like my man like six two and higher. Oh, so he just won you over. He did. Um, he was completely opposite of what I like. He got kids with an F on the end. Completely. Completely. Like I didn't. I don't. I don't like men with kids because I feel like it takes away from me. They got to spend time with all those kids. You got all oh, those kids. Yeah. He has five. Oh well, you're right then. Okay. I did a social experiment. You know, because by by trade, my my BS degree was a was a psych degree. You know, now they don't get my MBA. But I was like trying to figure out how come I wouldn't get any any callbacks. So I did a social experiment. I went on ten dates. Five dates I could like myself. Okay? Then there five dates where I could like a pure asshole. Excuse the language, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse the language. Now, you want to guess who called me back? You want me to be like that Pretty much, yeah. I got all five of them calling me back. And I was like, is this how dating a DMV actually really is? You got to be an asshole and not have somebody to call you back? I'm done. Yeah. You know, this only happens I moved back to, to North Carolina. Not intending to ever come back to this area. And all of a sudden, I came back to the area. You know, a uh, guy brought me back, literally. How the smell? That's it. So we have red onions in here. We got some red red onions. We got some mushrooms in here as well, and we have some jalapeno peppers. Now I, I'm saving this for later because I'm going. To, I'm not going to put it in right now. I need to finish burning the curry. Okay. You ever heard of some burning curry? I have not. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> okay. when. Uh, I'm not gonna do curry out like I want to. So when you, when you do anything with curry with it, right? You need to put some oil in the pan, and then you need to go ahead and put your um your curry in the pan with the oil. I did it backwards. I I put the vegetables in. I mean, I shouldn't have done that first, but I'm catching up. You want to burn the curry first because that's enough. The curry has its own unique flavor and spice. And what to bring out all the flavor of the curry is to burn the curry with the oil in the skillet first, before you start adding in everything else. That's what you have to do. I'm kind of doing it in reverse. So I noticed when using curry, you have to use like a lot of it. Why is that? Uh, curry is a very strong spice, however, it requires a lot of care and attention. You know, um, you want to make sure that everything gets coated well, and there's about a thousand different ways you can make curry, but not all of them make make sense. You know, people in India make curry a certain way. People in Trinidad make curry a certain way. People, you know, ever make curry a certain way, and that's their way. You know, there is like traditional ways, then there is um, American way. You know, there's a Trini way. There's a Jamaican way. There's an Asian way. All the and every single one of them has a different version of curry. Very different.
And they have reached out to the best probably uh, that I don't want them because my daughter told me that so they would rather be in school and I'm fine with that. But you said she needs this. <laughs> she didn't do very well virtually. Oh, okay. So it, it just depends. Some people, it's, it's like adult, you know, <laughs> the adult learning theory. Yeah. It took a while to get that one out. You know, different people learn different ways, right? Yeah. Very and, true. and that's everybody. Adult, adults, we learn differently. Mostly, most adults learn by increments, okay? 10, 15 minutes. And yes. then all of a sudden we start talking out. <laughs> so you start, you, you apply that theory to kids. Mm-hmm. Kids are many adults. We don't want to admit it, but they're many they adults. Really are, yeah. And you're forcing them to be in front of a computer, the way we are in front of a computer, mm-hmm. and to do instructional learning with a structure. They're going to zonk out out there on a certain time frame. So the same principle that applies to us, what the learning theory applies to them. And this method. Yeah, it, it did work for her. And then the fact that, like I said, she's the only kid, and being at home all day, every day, in front of it, it didn't work out. And it was stressful for me. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be the teacher. <laughs> yeah. I got to work, too. Like, it's hard. Like, it was, it was rough. See, I guess that's the part that I don't understand because I have two. So when, you know, when your daughter would be like, okay, mom, I'm done, the twins would go and they would just help each other. Or they would just have that conversation. Might not learn this way at school, so I'm afraid to help you because if you go and learn my way, my method of teaching you, and they do something, you're gonna be so confused. Yeah. So, so you what do you think so far? So far, so good. So. Okay, so this is a is called um, Langostino. Okay. Okay. So these are like mini lobsters, basically. Turn that back to the. Oh, I'm sorry. Fugue Land, I'm so sorry. But this is <laughs> this is the lobster we're putting in place today. Langostino wild caught lobster. They're actually like mini lobsters. They look like crawfish. They do look like crawfish. Um, crawfish probably would taste good. Ooh, what is it? <laughs> Girl, you want me to get some meat on it? You want me to get some crawfish next? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Let's do that. Well, really? Before let me get right, right. The first yes. one to take. Yes. Okay. I didn't realize how good it was. It was really good. Man, let me tell you something. Oh. And there's nothing like a like a, like a Caribbean dish. Yeah. To yes. make to make you feel like you know. That's comfort food for me. It is. Some oxtails, nice beans. Oh, oh now I can make some oxtails. I'm going to have to come back for that. So, everybody can't make oxtails. I'm sorry. Okay. But do you fry? Okay, okay so I know okay. how to make them, but I don't make them the way that I'm supposed to. I boil the hell out of them and I then throw them in the oven. Okay, so <laughs> there's a, a few different ways to make oxtails, right? It depends on what's helpful to you. Mm-hmm. I do mine out of, out of um, I should say this, the lazy method. Drop what? Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's the only way I don't have it. But the way I throw the crock pot is different from most other people. I throw the crock pot on, and I leave it on for a whole hour on hot. On hot. There's nothing in the crock pot, so you know, this, this, this. And then I put oil in it. Half an hour. Ooh, sizzle! We good! You getting this? So then I, then I put the seasoned, seasoned oxtail into the crock pot. And I'm like, ooh, now we got it. So now, now I'm hitting the sizzle right Get my wood spoon, stir it up in the crock pot, right? Come back about an hour later, oh, now there's actually some broth in, inside the crock pot. It came from the actual oxtail itself. Then I have some beef broth that I got from before. my mom's organic. It's 90 milligrams. So it's not, it's not the grocery store broth with like seven, 800 milligrams. So now you have a healthier broth. But the taste is still going to be the same. A nice, hearty, rich, rich flavor. So, the oxtail is like cooking in the crock pot. Now I'm gonna add, after about a couple, two, three hours, right? And then I'm gonna start, I'm making it into a stew. So I add in the broth, more broth. I add in the um, kidney beans or black beans. I add in the carrots, I add in the, um, the red onions, the tomatoes that I dice up, you know, uh, putting a little bit of cumin powder and some cilantro. Uh, don't need any more oxytocin. Oxytocin is going to give it that cake anyway. Yeah. 
And you, you can go over more knocks that season. It's very Sometimes it's to give it a nice thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't forget to put that in. Okay, All right, look. Now, what? See what I'm doing? Nothing has stuck to the sides. Right. When's the last time you saw a mac and cheese when stuff was stuck to the sides? All the time. This one doesn't, see? Nothing stuck to the sides, see? Now, you know people say, I, when I put a roux in mine, well, here's what happened. Oh, yeah, I think this is like a pre- uh, Right. Here's what, and here's what I do. I put the roux, the roux forms on the back side. When it's in the oven, and it, um, and the milk, the condensed milk, starts combining with the cheese, right? It starts becoming gooey and gooey. I took it out of the oven for a purpose. One, I didn't want it to sit to the sides. Two, I didn't want it to burn. Three, I wanted to start getting the roux. So I start mixing, mixing it together, and that forms the roux at that point. This has a total different consistency now than when I first took it out earlier, right? See that? Want to taste? Absolutely. So, I noticed there are like different versions of macaroni and cheese. Like, I go to, for my friend, she was from the, um, she was from the Bahamas, when she makes her mac, like, they like it where it's like... Maggie. Really, they put Maggie in it. I don't know what that is. But I was talking about the consistency and like the thickness of it, like how it's hard, you break it out in chunks. And it's, so depending on where you go, everybody is acting different. Like when I go to a Jamaican restaurant, I love their mac and cheese. For some reason, they got like this little hint of spice in there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do in there, but I'm like, oh, okay. So this is like a That's a seasonal. seasonal. Now, here's your taste this. That's just one of the you right there. Thank you. How are you welcome? taste the seasonings, you taste the, the lobster. The, the star is the lobster. So I have to make the star, the lobster be the star. Mm -hmm. Now I'm about to go home and try this. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, right. Well, I'm to mess it up. <laughs> this is something I have to go home and practice a couple of times. You bring back, it's macaroni and cheese and potato salad. You yeah. bring it to my potato salad. Ain't gotta be right. Like it I would not eat your potato salad. Okay. Like and right. then you get banned. I can do potatoes out. What you put in there? Then I'm gonna know. Who you put it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying. Really, 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 we going there. We going there. I ain't taking yeah. your potato salad. I'm gonna put this. Yeah. But that's something I'm running to. The mac and cheese, the curd. Really, I'm getting questioned on potato salad. Yeah. I ain't putting no raisins in there. I'm just about to say that if I see a woman, I'm, not, I'm, I'm trying not. to do a friend giving. I'm going to raise the potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a friend salad? No problem, I can do that. <laughs> but it's just only potato salad, yes, though. <laughs> I'm going to raise the potato salad. Try that. Ladies and gentlemen at home in the food land, look at this. Look at that. I think it's pretty good myself. It definitely is. That's good. Alright, so all jokes aside, this thing is done. Now we can start playing. And then we can go eat. So we're gonna take a pause and we move to the dining room. We're going to end our show on the dining room. This will cost us a fortune at a restaurant. Absolutely. Just the lobster mac by itself. Right. Like $25? Yeah. It might have been $35. <laughs> yeah. 
Then he got the wine. That would have been like fifteen dollars a glass. A glass. <laughs> yes. But this is like three separate entrees. Three, by it itself. is. That's all. But I don't know how to eat all this. I need to get him. That's, that's a big old piece of fish. Because I sure was like, you know what? He told me a story. Very true, actually. He said he went out to eat with some friends of his, and there was a lot of them. He said he was the only one who didn't say it. He was like, no, he was the only one who said his grace that night at the table. Everybody else didn't say grace. They just went straight to eating. How about everybody got sick and he didn't? Wow. Uh -huh. And I was just about to say, is that something that bothers you? Because I really don't do that anymore. That, I said that. I shouldn't say that. Mmm. Currently, it won't stop somebody. That's true. I don't mind older if you don't look old. Exactly. That's the key. Mm -hmm. So what you were saying about Mary, though? She was young. She was like 14. Was she? She was very young. Very young. Joseph was an old man. And Joseph never slept with her. Did he ever exactly. eventually sleep with her? You know what? It was never said that I know about, but I have not read the entire Bible. Me either. I just have, like, you know, family members that have, and then I ask questions here and there, a little research on my own. But what I do think is funny, have you ever heard of anyone European mentioned in the Bible? Anyone not of color in the Bible? Yeah, I mean, the white people, you talking about white people? Mm -hmm. they're, they're the one who forced it upon us, that this religion. Right, but like any of the actual Bible stories. I'm just asking because I have it. Maybe something that I just so talked to. I see where you're going with this, but there is a, a question on my mind. Jesus went from being a baby to being a full-blown man, right? What happens to the in-between years of him growing up? They don't speak on it. Mm -mm, they don't. At all. Wait, what? have you seen Passion of the Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, didn't they, I believe they did show him as a child. That was in a movie. But, but that, was, exactly. that was in a movie. Right. Yeah, they had the improvised. Mm -hmm. So there are actually more books in the Bible than not in the King James Version that's actually right. in the Catholic Version. You know, the Bible. There are different versions of the Bible, period. There is. Mm -hmm. And um, the Catholic version has about quite a few more books of the Bible in there. And then there are some more books of the Bible that weren't even in the Bible itself, you know. So, yeah, that's my that's my problem. Like, it's way too many books of the Bible missing. There's way too many religions out here. So, who are, who are you to tell another religion that what they believe is wrong? Exactly. Somebody is right, and if they feel like they're right, we got the Indians. Like, who are we to tell these people that when they're praying to all these different spirits and God that they're wrong? It's something, something worked for them. It, it's something worked for them. So we can't sit up here and say that Jesus is the only way. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, you can't because these other religions, they feel like their way is the way. Right. And it was, um, everybody is, is looked at as being problem. a pagan. No. Yeah. Yeah. The pagan. What is it? Oh, it's a pagan god. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm only on episode two, and I just been like, no, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. People are getting knocked off. Getting to the point. I and know. So the first episode. Then you got to mass. I know. Exactly. On the first episode, <laughs> they didn't die to the last ten minutes yeah. of the episode. So I had to sit there and watch all that, and you're sleepy on top of that, and you listen to all this talking. I need some action. <laughs> no, but he had, he had to set it up. It was, it was being a it was, it was a setup. My goodness, and then episode two, I ain't seen no killing. Yeah, no, you're right. I did say the same thing. It was it definitely was. So it's gonna get better. It, it oh, yeah, is. Yeah, it's better. It is. Cause I'm like, dang, I'm gonna have to turn this off. Mm -hmm. My boyfriend, he went to sleep. I'm resisting the urge to tell you the ending. But yeah, I was gonna say the same <laughs> thing. I am resisting the urge right mm. now. I was going to say that. Just. Keep watching. Keep, Keep watching. watching. And I mean, I got some theories mm -hmm. in my mind based off episode two, what happened. And you got the little brother looking for his, the cop brother looking for his cop and trying to, you know, investigate, see what's going on. Yeah, he got mm -hmm. a lot going on with him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so no, I was I like, I picked up on that last night. I was like, okay. But yeah, 
it's slow for me right now. I'm like, I don't know. No, it picks up. It picks yeah. up. Better. Oh no, 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 no. It's gonna pick up. Because you were like you're gonna be like yelling at the screen TV. I can't believe this just happened. Yes. And then I was surprised I like this. The moments. They so diplomatic in the movie. Like you want to go home, you can follow these rules, and they oh. they follow the rules completely. Like it's really well starting in the beginning. They have been following. Don't the say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Don't say it. But they have. They they like. Jamie's is one change. Okay. But well, it's kind of like they really didn't have a choice to play the game. Did they? Did they have a choice to play the game or not? It's in the initial. It's like going to be one have a choice. Mm-hmm. But no, that dude signed that paper when he was forced to sign the paper. And they came and found, they was finding these people. See, you gotta stop asking questions. Cause <laughs> what's gonna happen is, they just gonna end up telling you. And then it's not gonna be good anymore. Okay, do you want me to tell you? No, that's, that's no. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, that's a no. Okay. Cause what's, what's we supposed to? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To um, your successful cooking show. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Making it monetized on YouTube. Oh. Okay, yes. Oh. Do that. <laughs> yes. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in with us to Cooking and Conversation. So have a great day.